got a machete in your pocket, sir, or are you just happy to see me? I'm just saying, why wouldn't you check the back seat? I'm just not here for it. I kind of enjoyed the axe to the face. Ooh, hey there, Mr. Monster. So, chill or kill? everybody how are ya hello how in the fuck you been girl what's up what's good <laughs> what's cracking what's bad <laughs> what's cracking that what you bag? been ahead <laughs> 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 what's up it has been a hot fucking minute since we've done a netflix and Kale. it really has remember um if you were at that convention and you said we do these on saturdays and then you know saturday came and then there wasn't one <gasps> Like, yeah. <laughs> See, the one thing that you should learn uh, in jumping on board with this show is that um, sometimes, not all the time, but there might be some inconsistency. I feel like that's a that's what we can refer to as a period of growth. And we do have to uh, say thanks so much to everybody who came out in Chicago because we have experienced a period of growth and we are working through that. Yeah, period growth. <laughs> <laughs> period growth <laughs> no um no we're super happy to have all you new listeners uh and we uh, all the children all the, come little all children, children yeah we can't sing that much more of it because i think they might disney sing. yeah disney, disney will, will fuck disney you will, will, oh. they really will they will fuck you uh dry without the lube they definitely will Mm. Uh, but anyway, we're here today to get right on back in the swing of things with Netflix and Kill. And we have a fabulous, fabulous film to review today. I yeah. forgot the word review. Review? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, review is, is right. Um, yeah. Uh, we have, yeah, we are coming to a consensus on a film, if you will. We are. We are. <laughs> I, well, I was going to, like, first my brain was like a film to recommend to you today, but that's not exactly. It's not always true. What I'm about to do. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so this week we watched Truth or Dare. So I have played Truth or Dare many a time growing up and i never once died me either actually <laughs> but i also frequently did not choose the dares because i'm just a um really? I'm a, yeah oh absolutely i would always choose the truth and they'd be like they'd ask me some like salacious question they'd be like how many times have you smoked the ganja and i'd be like none because we're <laughs> 12 sally like <laughs> i'm just not yeah you fucking doing that you were the virginal stereotype i was you but, had nothing to hide but interestingly no like i just i feel like no one believed me on that because i'd be they'd be like really and i'd be like uh yeah yep <laughs> and they'd be like no you're lying and i'm like no i'm just kind of this jaded and shitty on my own oh, like wow. with, without okay. having to actually do any of the things i mean okay so i believe i was always i always chose the dare i was always a little yeah i wanted to see a what little daredevil yeah I was, you wanted to see what people can make you do see what you can make me do yeah and then if it was too bad i'd be like hey, fuck you i'm done <laughs> <laughs> ah so you didn't hold up to doing actually performing the dares not always mm. hmm. well in the in the film truth or dare uh, from 2017. That will get you killed. 2017. <laughs> Shitty year. <laughs> yeah. It was tough. Um, who directed this one? So this film uh, was co-written by Tommy Houston. This is Tommy with a T-H, which is weird. Mm, Thommy. Thommy. Good old Thommy. <laughs> it's Thommy. interesting. Thommy. Is that like I a I would imagine thing? it's pronounced like our... Tommy, though, but I don't know. Like Terry Mugler? Maybe. Like it's got to be a it's got to be a hard T. It can't be Thommy. Yeah, I think somebody was just trying to get classy, but not too much. 
possibly. Uh, well, we're going to say Tommy. Tommy Hudson and Ethan Lawrence, uh, and it was directed by Nick Simon. And this uh, film actually premiered on Sci-Fi ah. in 2017. Okay. Uh, and was actually met to generally positive reviews. Uh, and it grossed about uh, oh, <laughs> three thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars. Really, <laughs> from DVD and Blu-ray sales. Do you know what the film budget was? Like, do you have any information on that? Because I mean, this movie looked very good. Like, it looked good. Oh, totally. It looked beautiful. The so I'm actually kind of shocked. Was actually. At that really decent like some of the close-up shots mm-hmm. that would happen yeah and this film was really good um their special effects were good too the promotional poster is really good for this too it's like this really it's like a skull and then out from the skull comes all of the dares and slips mm. of paper um which is really interesting this is something that like i always um i love stuff that has like horror that has to deal with games which is why i'm really interested to see that new film that comes out uh, that's coming out um hide and seek is that what it is hide and seek um would you rather Mm -hmm. uh truth or dare i'm really just waiting on a red rover horror oh that would be amazing actually um but stuff like this really interests me because it plays on stuff that you know you probably played or dealt with as a child and didn't really think of it in like a horror aspect Mm -hmm. um so i like that little twist on things Mm-hmm. Kind of like the whole like Bloody Mary and all that, all that stuff. I think we talked about that. We did. I did Bloody Mary. Uh, yeah, me too. I did too. She was a great lay. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Mm. No. Well, so bit, would... bit dead in the sheet. <laughs> <laughs> bit low energy. <laughs> but Ooh. um, yeah, she was really active when I called her name three times, though. <laughs> you know, as you just really got to get her going. Yeah, you got to wrap it up. Anyway, so the premise behind this movie is that you have this group of friends, and it's always a group of friends Mm -hmm. in these movies, with especially with games and like um, teen slashers. So there were quite a few though. Like it wasn't your typical like maybe like five, four to five or something like that. Like it had a there was a large cast for this moment. I thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like you had to have uh, you had to have fodder. Quite frankly, Honestly. I think we ended up with like seven, seven of them because we had seven two couples. Yeah, two couples. And then we had my favorite, of course, the stylish, uh, sarcastic and funny husky kid. Yeah. Right. Oh, then you have course. like the weird kid with the camera. And then you have like the hot chick who may or may not have a drug addiction. And then you have. The kid that was recording, right? Yeah. Yep. So it was like eight. Yeah, and then there was one other random girl. Yeah, I, so I think we ended up with eight. Yeah. So it was like eight people, which I mm-hmm. thought was a little, like, that was rather large for this moment, I thought. Yeah. Um, but they're getting together on Halloween, uh, which anytime I see a plot synopsis and it talks about Halloween, I'm like, hmm? Yeah. Like, Scooby-Doo ears perk up immediately, down to watch it, always. Although I have to say that I, until this very moment, I had forgotten that they got together on Halloween. It really because it really, make... they did not give you that Halloween feel. No. That was there not was... an aesthetic that they pursued really at all. There was one paper skeleton that I believe I saw hanging up somewhere. One and paper a few skeleton. Yeah, and then that one girl showed up in a shitty cat like costume. But and that was it. Yeah, it I completely forgot it was Halloween. It didn't feel like Halloween. Yeah. Like, the vibe, like, there were no, like, it just didn't feel it. So, um, honestly, that point just sort of went out the door. I mean, clearly, me. I completely forgot about it. Yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah, it was eight, because it tells me right here on the page, <laughs> a group of eight college friends. There you go. Good. I'm glad I counted all of them. So they go to this house that's supposedly haunted um, by a vengeful spirit who lost a deadly game of Truth or Dare several years before. Um, when they decide to play the game, they are forced to answer each humiliating truth honestly and act upon each uh, dare, which gets increasingly... Um, dangerous with each round Um, and this sort of malevolent entity whatever it is asks them to do these violent acts uh, to themselves and each other um, or risk death by the spirit hence the um, tagline do the dare 
or the dare does you. Which, I don't know. I found it a little... I mean, if you just do nothing, then the dare happens anyway. So it's kind of like we had a lot, especially in the beginning, because it took a while to kind of like get up to... So the action of the film starts immediately, right? Like we, it, they don't... I, I do have to say this for them. We don't have a whole lot of lead-in time. Mm-hmm. Like the film starts, they're on their way there. Um, they get to the house that evening. They play the game. It, they don't really like dick around with all of this like lead in the action kind of starts immediately, but it takes them so long to figure out that you can, you know, something that is like really obvious. I feel like to most viewers that you can, you can sort of, um, play the dares. Like you can, you can think around them. You can outsmart them. You can do things. And these characters are not there. I don't think, you know what I think we were missing in this film? We were missing one smart character. We were missing one, like, horror lover that has seen a ton of horror movies and knows how to, like, play the game and knows how to outsmart it and knows how to kind of, like, use the... Because the dares were simple. It was, like, put your hand on the stove or, like, rob a gas station. Like, it was simple stuff where, you know... I mean, you and I, like, looked at each other and we were like, oh, if you have to rob a gas station, just go inside and steal gum. Like, you're fucking 16 again. Like... Yeah. Whatever, you know? (laughs) I mean, technically, that is robbing a gas station. You don't have to, like, it didn't say rob money. It didn't say, you know? Yeah. And I feel like there wasn't enough of that. And they kind of had some characters, like, the the cute blonde guy who was in med school, I think they, he had a moment, like, a brief, literally, like, yeah, three like minutes of film where he was trying to be smart. And that and came And then out of that nowhere. didn't, you know. Yeah, it came out of nowhere, and then it fizzled out very quickly. Like, you didn't, you didn't have that... Um, that character that knows horror or is just smart in general, common sense, and is trying to kind of like outsmart it. So instead, you're just watching like a lot of really dumb people freak out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that's sort of the plot, um, general overview of the film. So we're going to go ahead and get into probably some uh, gory details, if you will. So if you're interested in watching this, pause this fucking shit right now, right now, immediately. Press pause, go watch the film, and then come back to this point in time. And that way you won't have any of your shit ruined for you. Or if you just don't give a fuck and want to keep listening, then, then we going to go on right on here to then get started. We dare you to do so. I like that. So, yeah, that was great. That was clever. <laughs> Off the cuff, if you will. Yeah, so like you said, um there I completely agree. There was a um sort of a not lone wolf. What's the word that I'm thinking of? Um there was that shit. Um not Lone Wolf, help me out here. What are you like trying to describe? Like a underdog type character, like what not a part of the main clique, like... Like an outcast? Yes. Yeah. The word. That's yes. the word that I'm looking for. You were missing a smart, like, outcast type character. Yeah. Who would sort of, who could sort of come in and be like, uh, guys, like, you know... Let's fucking do this and do yeah. it right. Yeah. So the dares, um, like I said previously, they get increasingly more dangerous. Uh, you start out with like putting your hands on the stove um, and it eventually goes to like hang yourself or, mm-hmm. um, uh, yeah, robbing a bank or uh, what's the that um, cut off seven body parts. Seven like, living, seven, seven whole living body parts. Whole living body parts. Um, and I agree. It took them way too long to get to that point to where they could understand that they could play around those things. Yeah. I feel like we were missing a lot of, um, and potentially that was, um, intentional on the, on the director and the writer's behalf. But, um, I I don't, I don't know if that was the case. Maybe they wanted to try to strip those, uh, archetypes that we always have. I feel like we didn't really have a final girl. 
in this. Um, you and I had kind of kicked around the idea as we were watching that, you know, maybe it's going to be the vegan girl because she's like supposed to be all like boho, peace loving vegan girl. Well, she's your and virginal yeah, character. Yeah. And even they she's like the virginal character. She's dress super her vegan. Like, they dress her like she's some sort of like weird. Like him. she's from Midsummer. Yeah, like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually. She looked like she could have been at home in that film in that first outfit that she wore. But um, interestingly, we never saw her in that type of wardrobe ever again right. throughout the film. After that, she was wearing fucking athletic leggings. And I'm she like, was um, in athleisure. it's interesting the choices we made there. But yeah, we had kind of kicked around the idea that maybe it's her. There's that weird scene in the beginning where um, it's she and her boyfriend and, you know, her her best friend is in the back seat and um you know there's some sort of like weird rear view mirror like staring thing going on with her boyfriend and her best friend which later turns into they're you know sleeping with each other and kenny well i had kicked around the idea to kenny that maybe this is something that she set up maybe it's like a a paranormal movie hijacked by vengeful girlfriend who knows that your ass is cheating and is gonna kill everybody yeah um which honestly i think is a plot line that i probably would have enjoyed more um but i felt like we were missing a final girl i felt like we were missing a smart like horror aficionado who could kind of like fill in some of the blanks and kind of give them some creative ideas of how to work around some of these dares because a lot of them were were workaroundable the other thing i didn't like is that um when the the spirit or entity or whatever called on the phone to clarify the dare (laughs) <laughs> you don't get to fucking go back and clarify it. Like, put it in your original dare. Thanks for not cheating, you fucker. You know? Yeah. that Because that part happened, um, it was like, oh. It was like it the was, second fucking she, dare. It was the second dare, and the vegan girl had to eat the burnt flesh from the first guy who put his hands on the stove. Mm-hmm. And she, her dare was to eat, like, the remaining flesh on the stove. Which, which was I mean, creative. Yeah, that was cool. Um, And, you know, a dare that I, you know. If I had to have any of them, we were both like, you know, "Is it? I we, mean, you know, I mean, I feel it's like already we cooked. Just do it, like it's already cooked." Um, but so it's she took a piece of sick. it, and then like that, whatever entity it was, uh, it called right, and it was yeah, like called on the phone. Yeah, and it was like, "Hey, so um, I go ahead and eat it all. Eat all of it, actually. Yeah. You, but you can't. You didn't say all. You fucker. No, like you didn't. I would have been like, you know what? You didn't say that in your original dare, bitch." Yeah. So that sort of took away from that. Um, it took away from it for me. Yeah. Honestly, because yep. I'm like, it just really didn't feel necessary. Like, I yeah. understand that you want this entity to be aggressive and like probably, um, you know, playful in an evil sort of way. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, no, eat all of it. But I just didn't like that. It, it was very like. I ring. Just, it was like it was like the ring. Yeah. Um. It's like the little girl calling on the phone like seven days. Like you have to eat the whole thing. And I'm like, what? I I feel like the way that we could have gotten that same thing across is um you know whatever she eats like one piece of it or whatever and she it was supposed to be to have been all so she gets the repercussions of whatever she would have gotten if she didn't do the dare you know what I mean right. like if you're not like if I'm a crazy evil entity who's doing this like truth or dare game. And you don't do it, you don't do the dare to the level that I see it or that I feel it needs to be done, then I'm just going to be punitive. Like, I'm just going to punish you. I'm yeah. not going to call you and tell you, you know, that that was too much. And and it didn't happen ever again, except for with the seven living body parts that it scratched into the wall whole living, which is fine. That didn't bother me as much. But the phone call I felt was like totally unnecessary and like a little like prankster-ish. Yeah, it cheapened it. I mean, for what it is, it even, it just sort of cheapened it for me a little bit. I did like the moment, though. So I don't like that the entity called, but I did like the way that the phone as a prop was used. The fact that it was on the wall, that, like, green wall phone that we all had, like, in our houses, that model of phone um, when we were kids. Maybe not some of you guys, because... We're old as fuck. Um, <laughs> but I liked the way that the wires were used. Like, that the it, it wasn't plugged into the wall, and the wires were just, like, totally, like, cut. Yeah. Right? Physically. And so the girl goes over to answer the... Or the phone starts ringing, and the girl goes over there to investigate, and she, like, holds the wires up, and she's like, what the fuck? 
fuck. Like that moment was really cool to me. Yeah. I just wish it hadn't have been calling to clarify a dare. You know what I mean? Yeah, I completely agree. If I could take that shot and that scene like out of that movie and pluck it over into something else, um, some other sort of paranormal, paranormal haunt, haunted house sort of film, I feel like that was really good. But unfortunately... Not for this story. Yeah, same thing. It, it sort of makes me go back to the to the cinematography of the film. There was another moment for me that I really liked that I pointed out uh, during one of the dares where the dare was to pull two teeth. Mm. Um, and they had, th- and it was in the dining room and they had, so the entity gives you a time frame that you have to complete the dare. Right. And it usually does it by like writing it in the wall, like, you know, however many minutes you have or just telling you or whatever. So during this dare, they had to pull two teeth and they were in the dining room and a um, pair of pliers appeared on the on the dining room table. And when it said pull two teeth, the candlesticks that were on the table lit up and it was three of them. And I was like, oh, so that's like the, that's like the entity telling them that they have three minutes to to do it. And my stupid ass didn't get that at all. I was like, oh, look at this mood lying. Like, <laughs> he was like, oh, that was so cool how it like gave the time. And I was like, what? And he was like, the three candles, three minutes. And I was like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. See, this is why we would so work fuck that together up. in this because I would catch something like that. And I'd be like, Katie, 100%. That, that's three minutes. No, I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> His teeth are my bullet. Um, yeah, I felt like, and that was around the time that the hot blonde guy got like sort of thrust into the role of smart guy all of a sudden we fucking realize that he's in med school right you don't when know that, that was never mentioned all. before i don't think all of a sudden like when it's time to pull teeth he's like stepping up to bat as a fucking doctor or no it was when they had to drink the poison and he was like the phosphorus acid in the soda will like protect our stomachs or whatever i'm like okay come what on, like, like it was literally like where did that could we have from? established that earlier on please thank yeah. you right um, it takes like two lines of dialogue, but anyway, so he steps in to be the smart guy and, um, hero, unfortunately that will. doesn't last very long because it only lasts three days because then he kills himself during Russian roulette. Yes, he does. Uh, to save the, <laughs> the girl that he is cheating on his girlfriend with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's that. Yeah. Um, so... With that being said, um, you oh, know, we, oh, one more point that oh, I wanted to raise was oh, oh, um, oh. when we were talking about things that took us out of it. Um, the fact that they left, the fact that we are explicitly told that it has nothing to do with the house that it's just the game of truth or dare mm-hmm. that is. That bothered me. The fact that we left the house halfway through and then went to the hospital and then went like home to dorm rooms and then like we're still sort of being like, Uh I I think that that was like clearly a plot device because I mean, you couldn't have a dare like rob a gas station if the whole plot of the film is, is inside this house. But I feel like you could get creative with the dares and keep them all in the house. Yeah, I think so. Like I think Uh, a lot of the dares that happened outside the house did not need to really Either they didn't need to happen like the gas station thing, which was just totally superfluous. Yeah. Or they could have been reworked to be inside the house. I felt like taking us out of that one specific setting was unnecessary. Yeah. And so they and because they also play it up to be like they're going to be locked in this house because when shit starts to go down, like the house sort of reacts. It shuts them in. Right. It boards up the window. Right. Like it does all of this. And then... Um, the first time that a character dies, like literally the next scene is them at the hospital. Yeah. And they're just chilling in the waiting room. And I'm like, what? And I guess I kind of get that potentially they could have been going for like, they could have been going for that trope, which used to be thinking outside the box. But now I feel like a lot more horror films are doing this where they like set up a spooky setting And the action of the film starts proceeding. And then like halfway through or not even halfway through in the case of this movie, they take you out of that setting. Yeah. Almost to say like, okay, you know, they're out of that setting. Now it's all going to calm down. And then the scary thing shows back up in their like house or whatever or the non-scary setting. And it's like, okay, we get it. Like the house isn't haunted. The people are or, you know, but Mm -hmm. ever since we had, I mean, really before this, but the film that did that best was like Insidious. Yeah. 
Totally. The house isn't haunted. And if you want to get really specific, I mean, you could go even further back to like poltergeist. Yeah. The house isn't haunted. The person is. Yeah. But like we've seen that. And so in a film like this where, I mean, this is just like a fun little romp um, of a film. And I feel like that was, that maybe didn't serve it best because it just kind of shattered the whole vibe. Like the house had a very spooky vibe in itself, and yeah. by trying to take it outside of that, kind of, kind of undercut it. I yeah, think. I would have liked to have seen it um, go in the direction of we stayed in the house because I think that can if if you know what you're doing that can be completely terrifying, right? Using yeah. your space and utilizing your space that you have within, um, you know with what you have to work with in this house. And then I think we could have cut down on the number of players. Yeah. Um, so that way it wouldn't have like been repetitive mm-hmm. or felt like it was like lingering or going on too much. Cut down the number of players, kept it in the house. And then later on added in that element of like, it's not the house. It's, you know, whatever. Right. Like even if you later. leave, even if you're able to. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, like, it. like maybe the last dare, somehow they get out of the house and then they, like you know, it's... decide to leave and they have left one dare undone. So maybe two weeks later, you know, that dare just shows or, yeah. up in a, in a totally different setting. Or even if you're left with your final girl and she thinks she's outside of the house or whatever and she's done, but she mm. still has her last dare. Right. That yeah, that's what I'm do. saying. Something yeah. along those lines, like I think would have served it a little bit better than what it did because also the film really just left you like a really bad orgasm. Like yeah. you were reaching it and you were going there and then and then you had it, you had an ending, but you didn't get the good feeling. Yeah, you know? which is interesting because mom started watching it and then she asked me, you know, like how it ended and I kind of described it to her and she was like, oh, well, that sounds like actually really cool. Like, that's kind of cool that they did that. And she's a bigger fan of those types of endings than I am. I kind of think it's a cop out. Yeah. Um, She's a bigger fan of that than me. So she actually thought that that was a cool idea with the whole like car crash and then the screen goes black and you hear one person gasp for air, but you don't know who it is yeah um i'm not i kind of feel like you should have written an ending and i kind of feel like that wasn't necessarily an ending also we don't know if it was that girl like we don't know if that girl made the decision it kind of looked like she made the decision to just drive straight into the tree but it could be the dare taking over and driving them straight into the you know like yeah it looks like she made a choice but did she really or was that her running out of time and the dare making her yeah i thought that too like you because you have the two last girls left and the last dare is for one of the girls to kill the other one and they're driving super fast in this car and the one girl's like no i'm not gonna kill my best friend even though she's fucking slept with my fucking boyfriend you know (laughs) i would be like oh well all right (laughs) yeah hey bitch karma (laughs) um anyway um and so you don't really know, like you said, if it's the entity that took over and drove them into the into the tree, or if the girl, one girl, was sacrificing herself. You don't really know. It literally cuts to black. I mean, but really, and the way because we actually went back and we rewatched that scene, and there are two trees. One of the the tree on the driver's side is closer to the car if you look at it through the windshield, and the tree on the passenger side is further away. But bitch, if you hit that fucking thing going sixty miles an hour because she was revving the engine, like it's gonna hit you first, but it's gonna hit your friend like, like a million. A second later, like, like you're you d- not saving your friend. So, yeah, so it wasn't like she. It wasn't like she ran into a single pole that was on her side of the car. I mean, she ran into two fucking trees. So I'm like, what but are you actually then, doing? Like, even then, like, you why still don't you have speed up and then jump out of the car if you're trying to sacrifice yourself for her? Like, I, there was just a lot. Right. I, I think it was supposed to be that she chose to just kind of like toss a coin and see how it worked out for him, but. I, I don't know. It just seemed, again, it seemed like there was a smarter way to do that from a character standpoint. And so I really struggled with feeling what I felt like they were, tr- feeling what I felt like the the writers and the director wanted me to feel during that scene. Right, right, right. I was kind of distanced from it. Yeah, I would agree. So with all that being said, you know, we like to get into some rotten tomatoes, some Ooh, little critic reviews. What do the tomatoes have to say to die? The tomatoes have to say. In the meantime, though, you may want to pass on truth or dare. (laughs) 
Is that how that started? In the meantime. In the meantime. Uh, Next one says, uh, none of this has payoff anywhere near worth what it takes to set up. Which is true. Which is true. Uh, And there's only three, so I'll go ahead and read the third one. It says, the big problem of the film is its lack of corrosive mood or the slightest destabilizing element. The fuck does that mean, though? I don't know, but I like that corrosive mood. Like, I feel like that's my vibe. (laughs) Monday morning, I'm in a corrosive mood. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) That is true. I don't know that I... mm, I I definitely agree with the first two. I don't know that I agree with that last one. I guess what he's saying is, is there's a lack of, like, deterioration from... Or lack of, like deterioration from your normal everyday life into the horror murder fucking truth or dare game that they got themselves into yeah i mean it is very abrupt and there's not a lot of there's not a big journey from i mean the first dare kind of i i guess i actually would have appreciated more um well one i would have appreciated more truths and i think that that could have been we only had two Right. Right. Because your truths were like meant to be like life changing shit that you have to reveal, shit. like that you're sleeping with your best friend's boyfriend or that you have a drug addiction or whatever. By the way, we never got closure on that. We never figured out what her drug addiction was. Yeah. They never dropped any sort of line about her being addicted to heroin or cocaine or whatever. Like we never got closure on that. She just lied and said she wasn't addicted and then got killed, but we never found out yeah um didn't didn't care for that lack of closure and and then that was it we didn't get any more truths yeah that was it um um but i i guess i could see where the dares like started as like it it was not at any point innocent you know what i mean like i would have appreciated a couple really innocent dares before we went straight to like put your hand on the stove right right, right, you know yeah um also if you ever have to put your hand on a hot stove to uh, appease an angry, vengeful truth or dare ghost, use the back of your hand because you won't, your nerves won't react and make you grab the stove, thus keeping your hand on the hot object. Test hot objects with the back of your hand. Interesting. Learned that in home ec class. Didn't know that. So that, thank you, oh. Mrs. Mack from, uh, oh, wow. from eighth grade. But then the back of your hand gets scarred and it's visible. Uh, it does, but if you, t- actually, this is real. If you touch something hot with, like, the palm of your hand, or the, like, uh-huh. the palm facing side of your fingers, yeah. like, your body's natural nerve reaction is to just grab onto the thing. Like, your body, like, okay. the nerves react to just grab it. And then it takes, like, a few minutes for you to, like, consciously, like, Ugh, get your hand off. Yeah. Whereas if it's the back, you can't do that. Do you know I did that one time? With When what? I was little, when I was maybe, like, I was probably still in diapers um i stuck my hand in a in a gas like in a, in a stove mm. like i stuck my hand right on it burn it clean slap up shit yeah it was Jeez, the front or the, the back, back. <laughs> the, the hole i just stuck my whole fist in you know oh, okay just right on up in there that's how old were you i was still in diapers there's pictures of me um in my uh in the photo albums where i've got like this really like i've got this burn cast on my um, Damn. On my arm. I actually never knew that about you. Yeah, and I stuck my hand. Apparently, the babysitter was supposed to be watching me and was not. And apparently, I think my mom like beat her ass after that or something. Probably. <laughs> no one your mom, to be honest. Was there like cookies in there? Were you like fucking trying to get some, they, some, no. some good? No, I think I was just like, let me That's just so stick my hand in That's so interesting. Because as a baby, I climbed up to the top of the recliner and swan dove off. Why oh. were we trying to like go? I've also stuck my... We never wanted this life. <laughs> I also <laughs> stuck my finger on an electrical socket one time. Time. Yeah, it's a lot. All of these things we don't recommend doing, y'all. Not at all. I did that, um, but it was when I was renovating a house, so I can't really blame <laughs> being an infant. Uh, well, you know, for that poor. Another thing that, I, that I don't recommend is this film. Yes. <laughs> no. Um. I. I don't know. It's kind of. I said that as a joke. Um. I'm probably gonna have to kill it, honestly. Um. Because I just don't. The story is interesting. The cinematography is very beautiful. Like, it's done really well. It's definitely not something that makes you feel um, visually that it's low budget. 
No, not at all. Um, it looks like a full budget film. Like whoever was in charge of making the decisions on that, I, I mean, was it looked great. amazing. Yeah. Um, but it just didn't. Um, if it had, le- I'm gonna tell you what. If it had left me with a better ending, if I had felt satisfied, then I probably would have chilled with it. But because I just felt like the ending was kind of a cop out just to be like interesting and like, Ooh, we're going to make you think, um, I'm going to have to kill it. Yeah. I I have to agree with you. And for exactly the same reasoning, um, I, I felt like a lot of it felt somewhat directionless. I felt like we didn't see a good arc of the dares starting off playful and like funny and like we're enjoying the game. There was no time where they were kind of just enjoying things. You know what I mean? And I think you really need that. And then that spike in like, holy shit, like gradually getting more stares to to the really, truly lethal stuff. Right. Um, And that that was not there. Uh, And then, of course, that horrible ending. I just I, I don't. Very rarely does an ending like that where you don't like very clearly spell things out work. Um, it it just it just doesn't work. Yeah, um, unless you like you have to have it, it has to be very specific direction, and because this film didn't lead up to any of that, yeah, it just did not work. Yeah, no, it, it no. Um, like, you can leave us in the dark, like, films like like Blair Witch Project at yeah. the end, where it's just left at, like, the end. But, like, that film was so masterfully done, like, it just worked for it. And yeah. it made sense, Yeah, right? it made because sense. Because you're for left this, in the woods. Make sense. Who knows? Yes. And found footage. So yeah. it just didn't work for this film. No. They tried to force, I think they tried to force it, and it just didn't work. It needed a fully thought out, fleshed out it ending needed an to ending. be impactful. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, yeah, I'm going to have to kill it, too, um, for the lack of a clear build up to lethal um, to lethal dares, um, the lack of that playful beginning, and the totally unsatisfactory, like, wet dribble ending. Yeah, totally. Um, that just really, that just really turns me off every time. Yeah. Every Always. single fucking time. <laughs> um, that said, uh, if you hate yourself... <laughs> If, well, here's the thing. If endings like that don't bother you, those like open-ended things, because like I said, I told, now to be fair, my mother did not sit down and invest the entire like runtime of the film in this story, Mm -hmm. right? So she watched like the first little bit, like the first half, maybe if that, and then went away and kind of, I told her the rest of the film when she asked me. So she didn't actually see it happening, um, so that I'm sure colors her opinion somewhat, but she thought it actually sounded like a cool ending. So if endings like that don't bother you and you haven't already seen the film, maybe go check it out. Yeah, but totally. Our official. Or don't listen to our fucking opinions. Go figure out what the kill. fuck you like. I mean, we're just here telling you what we like and hopefully, live you know, life. you feel the same. Live, live your, your life. Live spread your best your wings, goddamn life, y'all. And play all the fly fucking truth or on games. over to the couch to watch fucking Netflix. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> All right, guys, um, you know what to do. Check us out on social media. Search for The Haunted Heart Podcast. We have a page on Facebook that we post uh, updates and event stuff on. So if you will like us there and then you can ask to join our closed Facebook group. It is closed for your privacy and the privacy of others who are in the group. Um, But there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. We still have our July scavenger hunt going on and it is anybody's game at this point. You can uh, see the Facebook page. There's a pinned post where you can um, read all of the different scavenger hunt. It's one thing for uh, every day in July. And whoever has the most points at the end, Kenny and I are rating your scavenger hunt findings. And whoever has the most points at the end will be receiving a uh, magical mystery box from Kenny Mm -hmm. and a magical mystery box from myself. Yes. And we will curate the things that are in those boxes. So if you want to take a peek inside our box, (laughs) um, enter the scavenger hunt and join the Facebook page. We are also on Instagram at the Haunted Heart Podcast, and we're on Twitter at the Haunted Heart. And you can find us anytime on the web at www.thehauntedheart.com. And if this is not enough fucking content for your crazy spooky ass, you can find us on patreon.com slash the Haunted Heart. And we have all kinds of bonus content there. We've got spooky stories. We've got smut stories. We've got bonus full-length episodes every month for Patreon members. Mm -hmm. So go check us out there and get on down with the 
supporting of this crazy bullshit train that we have. Yeah. Get on this train. (laughs) Strap on to this ride. Yeah. All right. So on that note, we're going to close it out. And you guys know what you have to do. Until next time, you've got to stay spooky. spooky.